Good afternoon and welcome to the first ICE webinar of 2023, a cool place for hot topics. Today we are joined by KA Imaging's founder and CTO, Kareem Kareem, and application specialist Jay Kotiko. ICE webinars would like to thank today's sponsor, KA Imaging. A spin-off from the University of Waterloo, KA Imaging specializes in, in developing innovative X-ray imaging technology and systems, providing solutions to the medical, veterinary, and non-destructive test industrial markets. For more information, visit kaimaging.com. Just a quick reminder that ICE Magazine is headed to ICE 23, 2023, sorry, at the Renaissance Na Nashville Hotel in Tennessee from February the 9th, 17th to the 19th. The Imaging Conference and Expo is the only conference dedicated to imaging directors, radiology administrators, and imaging engineers. ICE offers valuable CE credits from the ASRT and ACI, and is a unique community of key decision makers and influential imaging professionals. Registration is open, uh, so for more details, visit attendice.com. Today's webinar is eligible for one ARRT category A CE credit from the AHRA. You can obtain your CE tip certificate by completing the post webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one CE credit, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. We'll wrap up today's presentation with a live Q&A, so please submit your questions anytime using the questions feature on the webinar dashboard. And let's kick off today's webinar by giving away one of our brand new ice gym bags to the attendee that can tell me the answer to the following trivia question. 2023 is the Chinese year of the rabbit. Which famous rabbit's catchphrase was what's up doc? Answer now using the questions feature on your dashboard and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the webinar. As I mentioned earlier, our presenters today are Kareem Kareem and Jay Potticho, who will be discussing when the radiologist is not available, improving confidence in non-radiological environments with dual energy subtraction. Kareem, you may begin whenever you're ready. Thank you so much and uh, welcome everybody. My name is Kareem and I'm the founder, founder and chief technology officer for KA Imaging. And I'm joined today with uh, Jay Putipko, who is an application specialist and also an MRT. The title of our talk is When the Radiologist is Not Available, Improving Confidence in Non-Radiological Environments with Dual Energy Subtraction. So what we're going to talk about today are we're going to figure out what dual energy subtraction is, the limitations of dual energy subtraction techniques. We're going to look at uh, some hospital implementations and clinical results from uh, sites that have used single exposure dual energy, also known as spectral DR. And we're also going to understand how spectral DR can increase confidence in non radiological environments without adding extra burden like reading time. So, X ray has been around, oh, more than 100 years, 120 years. And uh, frankly, it hasn't changed. Um, the workflow might have improved. It's gone from analog film to digital. But in terms of the information content, it's essentially the same. Um, I assume everyone's familiar with X-ray, but just as a review, X-ray, you have fixed systems and mobile systems. On the left is a fixed system where um, the lady is holding an X-ray detector and mounted from the ceiling is an X-ray source. On the right-hand side is a cart where the X-ray detector is in a sleeve in the cart and you can see the source is attached to the cart on an arm and it comes with a display monitor. In both cases, the outcome is the same. You get an x-ray, um, but in one case, the cart can actually go to the bedside so the patient doesn't have to come to the room. Now, this probably, uh, x-ray is the most used um, medical imaging modality globally. And uh, even in the U.S., it's actually, it, it's actually the most used imaging modality. The problem with X-ray, which is why you get a lot of follow-on imaging requests, is that X-ray cannot really separate materials. For example, calcium and water. Calcium, because calcium is associated with bones, and water, because that's associated with soft tissue. Take, for example, this image um, that you've got on the screen and right there where the orange circle is, you can see there's some kind of a nodule. 
Now, that nodule could be calcified or it could be a soft tissue mass. Hard to say. You'd need a follow-on CT or something to kind of uh, clarify that. You can also see in the same image there's some other nodules and structures um, hiding. So that's kind of the main disadvantage of X-ray. The its inability to distinguish materials also uh, plays itself out in other applications. Take, for example, bedside imaging. Bedside imaging uses a lot of portable X-ray. You're looking for the tips of lines and tubes to verify position. Uh, sometimes you're looking for foreign bodies, for example, in the uh, operating room after a surgery. Um, there's, of course, pneumothorax, uh, accidental or otherwise. And then, of course, pneumonia in the ICU, for example, in um, immunosuppressed patients. In all of these situations, it's very challenging to move the patient to a CT. And the question is, you have to do the imaging with an X-ray. And if X-ray is not very good, then you've got a bit of a challenge. The other place is more opportunistic. Um, historically, lateral X-rays um, have not gained a lot of widespread attention, but they're actually a very powerful tool for looking in the, retro, in the retrocardiac space. Why that's important is because there's um, missed opportunities for triage and also incidental findings in that particular space. For example, coronary calcium is quite easy to spot in the lateral if calcium could be highlighted. In this particular image that you see on the screen, there's actually coronary calcium, but you can't see it because the soft tissue um, obscures it. Um, you can also find uh, masses sometimes hiding behind the heart, and that's, of course, very interesting. And there's other applications, including TB. So now that we've kind of identified the pain point for X-ray, let's, let's talk a little bit about what is dual energy X-ray. So dual energy X-ray is a technology that builds off regular X-ray. And regular X-ray, of course, the newest version of it uses these digital flat panel detectors. Digital flat panel detectors are the modern day equivalent to film, analog film. In the digital detector, you have a scintillator that converts the incoming X-ray into light. And then you have a very large optical camera that takes that light and converts it into an image. Signal is read out, and the digitization of the signal happens on the camera. That's why it's called digital X-ray. If you have different tissue types and thicknesses, you're going to get different levels of X-ray attenuation, which will then be seen on a grayscale. Of course, there's no material identification of separation in this process. All you see is a bunch of grayscale pixels. What's interesting, of course, is the X-ray that is striking the object and the detector is not monoenergetic. It's actually a spectrum, as you can see in the, on the bottom left. That spectrum contains a mixture of low energy, middle energy, and high energy X-rays. What, what else is also quite important here is that there is actually a dependence on attenuation depending on whether you've got soft tissue and bone, and that soft tissue and bone attenuation varies with X-ray energy. That's a feature that's not really utilized today. In, in fact, today everything is just considered to be um, grayscale, black and white, and everything is just integrated. But in principle, that information is available. What dual energy does is it makes use of this particular information. For example, in this um, image on the screen, you can see at 60 kV, you've got an attenuation coefficient for soft tissue that is much lower than the attenuation coefficient for bone. At 100 kV, the attenuation coefficient difference has changed substantially. If I could get two images, one at 40, one at 100, now I would have two different data points, which allows me to do a simple subtraction and extract a bone image and a soft tissue image, much like as is done on the image shown in the screen. So dual energy subtraction is not new. It was first uh, um, identified in the 1970s. In the old days, people tried lots of different techniques. We'll get through the history. But the short of it is, is that you have two images taken with different X-ray spectra, and then a logarithmic subtraction is applied in order to isolate one material, water on the, in the soft image, and calcium or bone in the right image. 
The advantage, of course, is you're isolating materials. It's not just about suppressing bone or suppressing soft tissue. When you identify calcium, you get everything that's got calcium in it. That includes the bones, but it also includes calcified nodules and coronary calcium. So the benefits of adopting dual energy x-ray then, they're actually quite a few. The big one, of course, is improved quality and risk reduction. Why? Because you're doing material identification, you can actually um, find problems instead of missing them. So there's a potential for reduction in readmission rates and non-reimbursed procedures, such as not missing nodules on pneumothorax. You also reduce your exposure to malpractice risk. The other nice benefit of dual energy, because it helps you find problems, is that your um, the number of incidental findings goes up. So there, of course, with incidental findings, there's a chance of early disease detection that is both helpful for the patient and the hospital. The third piece is on operating efficiencies. You actually get higher operating efficiencies with dual energy. The reason for that is because your imaging is more accurate, you optimize the use of your staff time and follow-on imaging equipment. You also reduce the amount of time to intervention, especially when you're dealing with the challenging portable x-rays. And more importantly, um, you get timely decision-making at the bedside by intensivists who need to make use of the information now and not four or six hours later when it's read by radiology. So there's a lot of opportunities here in terms of quality, risk reduction, incidental findings, and higher operating efficiencies that dual energy offers. But the but the funny thing is, dual energy is not widely used. Question one would ask is, what's causing dual energy to not be so widely used? So it's technological, that's the biggest Achilles heel, and it's historical. Historically, dual energy has required higher radiation per scan, so that limits your use cases. The dual energy technology was never portable, so it can't really go to the bedside and it can't really substitute ch standard chest x-ray because not all anatomies can be used with dual energy. Um, in terms of quality, image quality, you also had this nasty motion artifact that occurred because of patient breathing motion because you were taking two images. And that, of course, led to a uh, image consistency issue. And then there was a cost argument as well because it was not very um, easily available from limited number of vendors. So there were some costs associated with bringing it in and maintaining this equipment. If you look at it historically, when dual energy first came out, they weren't taking two exposures. They actually took only one exposure, but what they did is they used two um, CR plates and they used to put a copper mid filter in the middle to cause spectral separation to pull the energies apart. The problem with that approach, it didn't last very long, was that the copper mid filter took up half the in incoming radiation, so you had to double the radiation dose to the patient. So that solution didn't work well at all. In the 2000s, you started to get the two exposure solutions, and this is what's still in the market. Um, but the challenge with the two exposure solution is, as I mentioned previously, you've got motion artifact, you've got increased dose, it's not portable, you can't use it on all anatomies, so there's a lot of issues that come with that. A decade later, bone suppression software came upon the scene as a uh, half-hearted attempt to try and do uh, dual energy separation, but bone suppression software is exactly what it sounds like. It suppresses bone by identifying what bones look like. It cannot identify calcium, therefore it cannot identify nodules that are calcified or coronary calcium. It also can't identify nodules that are soft tissue. It'll just show you a nodule, but it won't give you the information to tell the difference between soft tissue um, or calcium. It's also very limited in its views, usually just PAAP. You can't use it on all anatomies and you can't use it on laterals or obliques. What's come out recently in the 2020s era is triple layer detector technology or spectral DR. This technology uses three layers where the middle layer is replaced. Instead of a mid filter, it's actually a sensing layer. The advantage of having three layers means that you are acquiring all the X-ray signal coming in and you can still get dual energy images. So you can still separate water and calcium and because the images are acquired simultaneously, you get no motion artifact. Because there's three sensor layers, you, 
you collect all the photons and your dose efficiency is very high, allowing you to now make a choice. In the case of pediatrics, you may choose to reduce the dose and keep the same image quality. And in other situations, you may choose to keep the dose the same and take the improved image quality. Just to give you an idea, a triple layer detector gives you roughly to 20 to 30% more dose efficiency than a traditional single layer detector. The advantage of course here is with triple layer detector technology, you don't have to change your X-ray source, you don't have to change your X-ray technique, you don't have to change your X-ray dose unless you want to lower it, and uh, the radiation levels are significantly lower than a CT, but your outcomes are going to be improved compared to an X-ray. Just to compare the three technologies we mentioned, which was older generation dual energy, bone suppression, and single layer, uh, single exposure triple layer detectors. With the single exposure triple layer detector, you can identify calcium in water because it's true dual energy. So you can see calcifications and bone and soft tissue separately. It can be used on any viewer on anatomy. There's no motion artifact. It can use existing X-ray sources. It can be used for fixed and portable applications and it's the most dose efficient solution. When you look at older generation dual energy, they were plagued with motion artifacts. They required special X-ray sources. They required grids with X-ray radiation. Solutions were not portable and the views were very limited to PA and chest only for anatomy. Bone suppression software, of course, cannot identify calcium and it has limited views, PA, AP, no laterals or obliques. And of course, the anatomy is limited to chest as well. So that's where single exposure triple layer detectors pose to be a paradigm shift in the way X-ray is done because you can still get your regular X-ray plus you get all the benefits. Ergo, this is the next generation of X-ray. Just to give you a little pictorial, on this graph on the bottom um, right there, you can see by using a single exposure triple layer detector, you can attach it to any DR room or mobile X-ray and get an improvement um, because you get true dual energy imaging. And that, of course, gives you material separation and identification with a sensitivity that starts to approach CT for some scans. CT, of course, is the gold standard with very good accuracy, but it's not accessible or affordable. And more importantly, it can go to the bedside. So because the newer generation triple layer uh, dual energy is so different from older generation dual energy, it's got a different name in the market. It's called spectral DR. Spectral DR is the dual energy imaging that works for both fixed and mobile. You get three images in a single exposure with no motion artifact and it's fully compatible with all X-ray sources, um, all X-ray equipment and techniques, and it can be used on any anatomy. Now, what sets apart dual energy technology from, uh, um, from traditional approaches? Well, we mentioned the motion artifact. And in fact, on this figure, you can see um, older generation dual energy and all of them suffering from motion artifact. On the right-hand side, you have spectral DR with no motion artifact. More importantly, um, spectral DR can give you lateral images with le which lets you view the retrocardiac space. And that, of course, is very important because there's a lot of misfindings and incidental findings that sit there. This is something that traditional dual energy cannot do without excessively increasing the dose to the patient. From an impact perspective, from an administrator's point of view, the benefits are incidental findings, optimized use of follow-on imaging, you're leveraging your existing equipment and techniques so you don't have to retrain your staff, and you're getting benefit to patients across multiple departments, radiology, ICU, ER, operating rooms. For the clinician, the big benefits include increased confidence, increased inter-reader agreement, a reduction in reading time on average, and incident findings, which leads to better patient care. For the technologist, the big benefits are time savings. Bedside imaging reduces the movement of patients across the hospital for follow-up imaging. It's also fully integrated with PACS, and it's the same procedure, so there's really no training required. And from a patient perspective, of course, because we're here always for the patient, incidental findings enables early detection of disease and you use x-ray so you minimize the dose to the patient. There's a lot of references here and we're happy to provide these to you and I'm going to pass it on to Jay 
who's going to talk about the clinical benefits that dual energy x-ray can provide to imaging departments. Uh, thanks, Kareem. Uh, yes, my name is Jay. I'm the clinical application specialist uh, for KA Imaging, and I'll be talking about some of the uh, advantages uh, yielded kind of tangibly to the uh, patient, the user, uh, the end user, the technologist, of course, and the institution as a whole. And we'll see that in a number of ways. So uh, one of the things that's uh, great about this uh, Spectral VR panel is that it's portable. It's the world's only fully portable uh, dual energy panel. So anywhere you can bring the panel and have a source to, uh, to shoot a dose of X-ray at it is anywhere that you can perform uh, spectral VR imaging. And it's not just the chest, therefore. There's also extremities, um, any area that you're going to image with traditional X-ray, uh, you can image with spectral VR with the same dose, same workflow, uh, but yield much more information. Uh, next slide. Uh, so, yeah, not just chest, uh, knees, uh, you can image ankles. Again, it's great for ER imaging, trauma cases uh, where you're looking for foreign bodies, fractures, uh, fluid effusions. Uh, and again, uh, the reader benefits from all this extra image data, uh, which is always gained at no extra cost in terms of dosage, uh, time, or change to workflow. Next slide. Uh, so bedside imaging, that's a huge area, uh, especially after the pandemic, and seems that it's uh, remained such uh, after what we've learned about infection control and, and um, the value of getting a great portable image as opposed to transporting patients uh, through the hospital with increased cleaning, um, all, of, all of the extra ancillary costs that that brings. So if there's four areas that uh, we could delineate where spectral D uh, DR changes uh, the game and provides an advantage uh, in portable situations, it would be these four um, areas. So line and tube uh, placement and subsequent verification uh, of those can be very, very difficult uh, tasks. So when the X-ray tech is called to uh, perform a portable X-ray to verify that the pick lines uh, in the right place, it can be very challenging, um, not only because of uh, just the, the disadvantage in the portable situation, uh, but there's also lots of overlapping lines and pathology uh, in these patients. So when you can provide uh, an advantage uh, in both time savings and ease of reading uh, in that line placement uh, verification image, you're really going to benefit the patient, um, alleviate time from the doctor reading it, and, uh, and improve improvements will kind of radiate outward from there. Uh, foreign bodies uh, through post-surgical imaging is a, a concern, of course, uh, a major patient care issue and also a quality and malpractice issue. Uh, so if the surgeon has to wait a long time to get that verification or um, to get a quality image that's gonna show that there's no remaining uh, items in a surgical patient, the clock's ticking, that becomes very uh, concerning for the patient health. Uh, they're under uh, anesthesia, and uh, it, it really causes a, a backlog and a problem. So being that uh, spectral DR can provide greater visualization of uh, these foreign items, uh, you can reap a great benefit uh, in, the, in the OR. Uh, pneumonia is a huge concern. Uh, it's uh, one of the highest, um, one of the most problematic, I should say, uh, hospital inquired uh, infections. So uh, portability is really key for these immunocompromised patients with poor mobility uh, and where a CT is not possible. So uh, getting a great portable image where you can better identify pneumonia uh, is going to lower malpractice issues, um, save time, save on the spread of infectious disease, and also save on frequent cleaning. Uh, that places a, a real burden on staff. And finally, pneumothorax, uh, which can range from fairly mundane but can get fairly serious uh, quite quickly. Uh, we'll see uh, in a number of ways how we can uh, help it, help uh, the reader excel, uh, a non-expert reader excel at um, identifying pneumothoraces. Next slide. So in the case of line delineation, we'll see a great example here uh, of the difference in, in quality afforded by a standard DRX ray 
uh, versus a spectral BR exam uh, when the object is to uh, place uh, a line properly or verify that the line has been placed. Uh, so on the left uh, image there, you'll see the standard DR image. Uh, it becomes very hard to follow the uh, the port line uh, through its entirety and to be 100% confident uh, it's in the superior vena cava. In the image on the right, though, uh, not only can you see that the tip uh, is there as desired, but uh, the NG tube, you can actually track that along its whole entirety uh, through the often hard to uh, see place, which is in the midline over the mediastinum and the, uh, the thoracic vertebrae. Uh, and as a point of interest, you can also really get a good look at the detail afforded uh, in the inferior aspect of the image, which really often suffers from quality uh, in the DR uh, world. But with spectral DR, you can actually see really nice detail in a wire mesh stent there. Next slide. Uh, again, a great case where line delineation was done uh, with a center uh, that does not use grids. So that's one thing is you can use a grid with the um, with the, uh, the the portable application, so spectral DR. But you can also really get great images without it. And we'll see an example of that here, how we really effectively helped uh, verify the placement of a line that's hard to see in the DR image. Uh, but again, which jumps out uh, quite nicely in the bone image, even given the fact that the tip of the line is uh, is overlying uh, one of the medial end of the ribs there. Next slide. Uh, again, a third image uh, we see, uh, as is often the case, many lines in, in ICU patients, they're kind of tor uh, tortuous, overlap each other and become uh, quite hard to identify. Uh, so as we progress kind of in an inferior fashion through the DR image, you'll see that it becomes more and more difficult to uh, to place these lines and to make sense of what's what. Uh, but again, in the portable uh, spectral DR image, uh, the bone image on the right there, you're afforded really nice visibility, uh, not, not only at the top of the image, but towards the bottom where it often gets harder to read. Uh, and you can actually, again, get a really nice look at uh, vascular uh, wire mesh stent that uh, pretty much becomes lost in the uh, in the DR. It's really washed out in that area. Uh, so again, not only lines and tubes, but other uh, kind of incidental bodies in there you're going to uh, see with a lot more detail. Next slide. A pneumothorax, uh, we see a situation here where uh, a non-expert reader might get just a little better look at uh, a pneumothorax and uh, even though it could possibly be missed in the DR image in some cases, uh, it really can't help but be seen in the soft tissue image uh, given that the ribs are removed and there's a lot more detail there just surrounding uh, that left lung and the lung markings. So we got to thinking, uh, what we'd really like to explore is what if we gave uh, some non-expert readers uh, a bunch of regular DR images and then we gave the same non-expert readers uh, the same images but also with the accompanying extra information of a soft tissue spectral DR image and a spectral DR bone image just as though we've been seeing. Uh, what kind of benefits would be garnered from that? Where would we see improvements? Uh, and kind of how strong would they be? Uh, and we found kind of three things. So the study was set up uh, with a variety of participants in terms of uh, level of knowledge and reading uh, radiographic exams. They were given 28 cases. Uh, the first round were given just the DR and in the second round were given all three and uh, given a web-based survey style uh, that was on a non-medical uh, reading device which ranged from uh, your typical home PC, all the way down to a tablet or a phone uh, in some cases. Uh, and again, there was no training set uh, whatsoever provided here. For some of these um, participants, it was the very first time they'd ever seen a spectral DR image. Uh, so we'll see in the next few slides uh, the results and how we really uh, provided an impressive um, uh, set of benefits. So here we see that uh, Again, given the fact that there's no uh, training study, you might, or training set, you might uh, initially assume that because there's three images, um, the readers are going to take much longer in the second round where they have those extra images. Uh, but we'll see here when you have the median time, uh, there actually is no difference. It's you know, statistically 
uh, negligible. The key there is that, again, with no training set, uh, you're not you're not uh, you know increasing the time that the reader is going to uh, to use. Like counterintuitively, you might again assume three times the images, three times the reading time. It's not the case uh, because, of course, in not all cases are they going to read the dual energy image. If it's a simple, fairly mundane, run of the mill case, they're going to get the answer. It's the situations where the answer's vague, uh, the image might not be that great, the clock starts ticking, uh, valuable time there. And if we can get you the answer with those two dual, uh, those two extra dual energy spectral DR images, uh, you can get your answer, stop the clock, move on to the next case. So it's those really tough to read cases where we make a difference um, in reading time. The next thing we notice is that uh, Many of the 28 images uh, had lines and tips in them, uh, and we wanted to examine the increase in tip visibility. And we saw that for eight out of nine readers, uh, they noticed an improvement in the dual energy images. So again, at no extra time, uh, they're noticing the tips much, much better, verifying that it's in the proper place, and then moving on to other cases um, that are, are pressing. And next slide. The third thing we noticed is that confidence uh, went way up. Uh, so that there was a median increase in confidence out of uh, 16 of 28 cases for each reader. So very impressive there. So when you take these threefold kind of benefits, uh, the fact that you're uh, you're often saving time uh, reading exams, uh, and again. If you go even further, uh, the data will show that a trained radiologist or trained reader, I should say, can actually uh, read up a 30% quicker uh, with dual energy images. So you're saving time, you're seeing more, uh, and you're more confident in uh, when you, what you do see. Uh, so three areas there that um, when combined, there's almost a synergy effect that it really has the, uh, the great effect of a benefit for not only the patient, but the reader uh, and the hospital as a whole. And next slide. So again, just a summary here, uh, no statistical change in median reading time for DR versus having all three images, lines and tubes were better visualized and uh, a nice increase in confidence. Incidental findings, that's another great area where the technology excels. So you're not only going to see things that you suspect are there, uh, you're also gonna see a lot of things that you didn't know were there, but nonetheless are. Uh, and the two most common are coronary calcium and solitary pulmonary nodules. So if you do a simple calculation, just working on the number of chest x-rays performed in a year in a general community size hospital, and given the percentage of folks walking around uh, in the public with unknown coronary calcium, uh, the data shows that just by working a uh, spectral DR panel into the regular workflow and not singling any other patients out that are high risk or going searching for it, uh, you're going to find about uh, over five years, 205 cases uh, extra of coronary calcium that you would not have seen. Uh, and the same goes for solitary pulmonary nodules over the course of five years, given the prominence uh, in the general public uh, with unknown solitary pulmonary nodules. You're going to find 60 over five years. So uh, that represents an increase in sensitivity by a third. So something very powerful there. Uh, coronary calcium, again, it's greatly seen uh, really nicely in the lateral, uh, uh, in the lateral dual energy uh, spectral DR bone image. Uh, you can quite nicely see uh, a nice calcification there in one of the coronary uh, vessels that's uh, I frankly would, would challenge anybody to see in the DR image. Uh, there's just too much overlapping anatomy to, uh, to even see that, but it's in fact seen with great ease in the bone image. And in the next slide here, we'll also see that uh, coronary calcifications can be seen uh, again in this patient, but not only that, you can actually see the wire mesh sense uh, that have been put in through um, uh, prior angioplasty uh, procedures. So again, something that you cannot see even at 1% of uh, really in the uh, lateral DR X-ray, uh, jumps right out to, uh, to the reader there with, with quite nice uh, detail afforded. Next slide. 
Uh, again, a case here that uh, shows how each uh, dual energy image, uh, spectral DR image, can provide its own uh, distinct yet complementary benefit to a case. In this case, we challenged a radiologist with just the DR image and asked for a reading. The radiologist read it as normal, uh, but when we subsequently gave them the two spectral DR images, they noticed something in each that they hadn't seen before. Uh, the most important, of course, being in the middle image, they noticed uh, a hidden lung lesion uh, under the right apical uh, area of the lung that was not seen in the DR because of overlapping uh, bone in, in, that, in the clavicle and the upper ribs. Uh, they also noted that, uh, interestingly, they saw an incidental finding uh, given the increased bone detail and a, uh, an older rib fracture that had subsequently healed. So you're seeing how each image can provide its own uh, different yet complementary um, extra data and benefit to a case. Uh, we, we learned from Kareem that, uh, of course, traditional dual energy solutions cannot perform uh, a lateral uh, exam. It's just um, a fact of burning up the, the high dose uh, on the PA image. You, you simply can't prudently turn this patient sideways and keep imaging them. Uh, but given that the fact that uh, spectral DR only uses one uh, dose uh, per view instead of two, you get no motion artifacts, and you're also given the uh, ability to do things like uh, lateral images. And we see how uh, important it is in this case. So when the patient was turned sideways, uh, the doctor noticed a sus suspicious mass in the retrocardiac space, uh, but spectral DR saved the day in that instead of um, going out for further testing or, or something like that, the reader was able to notice that it was actually two pathologies overlying each other. So they had a hidden mass uh, in the right lower lobe uh, plus a uh, bony degradation uh, in their uh, lower thoracic spine that when overlap becomes very confusing, but when separated becomes uh, actually quite easy to read. Uh, next image. So emergency room uh, examples, we'll see a few of those here. It's great in the emergency room. As I said, anywhere you can uh, bring up a uh, source and the plate, you can get an image. Uh, this uh, particular patient came into uh, a Midwestern community hospital uh, for chest x-rays, complaining of shortness of breath, and the reading radiologist noticed a suspicious mass-like area, uh, kind of in the retrocardiac uh, space there that uh, would have resulted in uh, further imaging had we not been there with um, the spectral DR plate. Uh, and we'll see in the next uh, slide here uh, what the result was. The reading radiologist was actually quite impressed because uh, even though given the DR was quite confusing, uh, he noted that the bone image in fact saved the day. So rather than thinking that this patient might have a suspicious mass or uh, a tumor, something very concerning. Uh, it was found out that it's uh, something far less concerning, painful nonetheless, but uh, was a bone spur that had been causing uh, this strange appearance when it overlapped the diaphragm. Um, so a great example of how it can augment uh, ER readings. Uh, again, a case where uh, a reader was given a DR image and actually read it as normal, but subsequently when given the soft tissue image, I noticed a focal opacity there, uh, indicative of pneumonia. The patient was uh, having a CT for an unrelated issue, but however, this was subsequently confirmed. Uh, so noticed first in the soft tissue image uh, and subsequently confirmed uh, in a non-related follow-up CT. Uh, it's a great tool, as I said, for increasing confidence. Uh, so this case, we gave a reader uh, the DR image and asked them to uh, to make a diagnosis. And they said there was pneumonia there, but they were only confident uh, to the degree of one out of five. But when in fact provided with the soft tissue image, again, the spectral DR image at no extra cost in dose or time, the radiologist uh, said that they were in fact correct, but their confidence was 100% now instead of being 20%. So you're not only seeing things that uh, you're uh, not seeing in the DR image, you're noticing with more confidence what's there and you're able to make a call uh, much easier uh, as to what's there. Next slide. 
Uh, it's great uh, for bony uh, detail. We'll just see simply in this uh, exam how you can get a greater look at the thoracic spine there. Notice things like uh, compression fractures when you don't have to contend with the overlying lung markings, especially in the, especially in the superior uh, thoracic spine there. And next slide. Foreign body delineation is made uh, much easier in the bone image. We'll see how the vascular clips are really not seen in the DR, uh, but quite easily jump out uh, to the reader in the bone image there. So it's a great example of how you're going to see things, uh, foreign bodies not only easier in the ER, but how I talked about previously in the OR. Uh, and one kind of final case here uh, regarding pneumothorax. This was a case uh, where a non-expert reader, uh, ER resident, was making the readings in the emergency room late at night on a slow Sunday. In so many words, patient came in with uh, chest pain and knowing that the spectral DR panel was there, the non-expert reader got in the habit of actually reading the dual energy images first without looking at the DR. Uh, and what he iterated to me was that uh, Again, he probably would have seen the uh, pneumothorax in the DR, uh, but maybe not, but he can help but see it uh, in the middle image. So it jumps right out and puts it right in your face to where you cannot help but see it. Uh, and finally, as Kareem said, uh, it's not only limited to lateral and, and PA or AP, but you can also do oblique views, uh, which were performed on this patient uh, who had a, a bullet from um, uh, a combat experience that uh, was just a, a really interesting image in improving the concept for an oblique view. So I'll Perfect. pass it Thank you so much. to Kareem here and he'll talk about the economic benefits. Thanks, Kareem. Thanks so much, Jay. So let's talk a little bit about economic benefits that dual energy can provide. So at the start of the presentation, we had said the benefits improve improved quality and risk reduction, incidental findings and higher operating efficiencies. And those of course hold true even today. You can see for example, with the, because of the higher sensitivity afforded by the bone and the soft tissue images, that allows you to find things that could lead to malpractice risk if they were missed. Um, incidental findings of course can help with um, the patient getting early detection and the hospital getting earlier sources of revenue. Um, and in terms of operating efficiencies, of course, uh, you can see how follow-on imaging and staff time can be optimized, especially in bedside imaging, where um, access to CT is challenging. So let's talk a little bit about liability avoidance, right? One of the big, big problems um, with the single or solitary pulmonary nodules is if they're missed and then found later, this is one of the biggest cost drivers um, for hospitals in the United States. There's actually a paper um, written on it, actually more than one. But um, we did this calculation for um, a small to medium-sized hospital. And um, what we noted is that annually, if this hospital was to adopt dual energy, um, they would find roughly 12 cases every year which translates into additional billings as a minimum of 120,000, but actually the malpractice costs avoided are considerable because it works out to something like um, more than $300,000 um, on average per lawsuit. Same argument uh, can be used on pneumothorax. Um, pneumothorax, of course, if it's uh, missed, can lead to the same type of malpractice issue, um, and that's reflected here. But with the pneumothorax, you also get the additional benefit that um, once a pneumothorax is found, then any procedure done is not going to be reimbursed. So in this case, you're also saving on those non-reimbursed procedures. Um, the reason why, of course, um, dual energy picks up nodules better, and this has been proven time and again over the last 20 years, is uh, primarily a higher sensitivity roughly 33% higher sensitivity, higher accuracy, um, a better positive predictive value, and a better negative predictive value. In fact, dual energy or spectral DR, because it can identify calcium and soft tissue, is twice as effective at finding solitary pulmonary nodules as bone suppression software. 
And this was a study that was published from the University of Chicago about a decade ago, where they actually compared regular X-ray, bone suppression software, and dual energy. And for pneumothorax, there was a similar study uh, carried out, I think, in Europe, where they looked at a variety of readers, radiologists, non-radiologists, senior physicians, residents, and interns. And in every situation, dual energy improved the finding of a small volume pneumothorax. And in fact, the best outcomes were for those who had the least experience. In terms of incidental findings, the big opportunities here sit in pulmonary nodules um, and coronary calcium. Coronary calcium, of course, one quarter of adults in the US have some kind of coronary calcium. Most of them go around without knowing it um, until, of course, um, something develops and you get a heart attack. For that same size, small to medium-sized hospital with the medium volume of patients, we estimated you'd find roughly 41 cases annually. Um, and that would leave to, lead to, as a minimum, $400,000 in additional billings. But procedures um, such as uh, bypasses and stuff, of course, would be much more, uh, would lead to additional billings for sure. So let's take a look and see what's the future for this type of technology. Earlier in the talk, I said uh, spectral DR or dual energy is kind of, especially spectral DR. Um, because it's addressed all the technological hurdles of older generation dual energy is the future of X-ray. So, of course, the big piece here is AI. Everyone talks AI. So, AI um, developed with spect spectral DR will be that much better than AI on regular DR. And uh, um, this is already underway. There are sites that are actually developing, actively developing AI using spectral DR. And uh, the expectation is that the sensitivity of the AI will improve. And of course, this is a great uh, triage tool for quality assurance, for example, in busy hospitals. The other application for dual energy is in um, something that's in the a dynamic imaging space. And so that's also kind of the future. In this particular case, you could use it for tomosynthesis, which is just looking at uh, multiple slices in the patient, or actually cone beam CT reconstructions. And people have started to work on this as well. It's quite remarkable when you take a look at the left image on the screen, where you have regular tomosynthesis on the regular DR image, but on the right hand side, you're seeing the bone tomosynthesis. And you can see how the images are quite striking with the bone image of devoid of soft tissue. You can do the same thing with the soft tissue image and apply tomosynthesis. And again, the visibility improves considerably because now with tomosynthesis and dual energy, you can actually identify if a nodule is calcified or not. See, in the past, tomosynthesis was nice. You could see behind the rib. You weren't able to identify if the material was calcium or not. And that's one of the reasons why you had to go to CT for bounce volume. Whereas with this type of device, because of the bone and soft tissue separation, you get that material information immediately in your regular tomos. So that kind of concludes uh, the talk. Um, in summary, um, spectral DR, single exposure dual energy enables new opportunities for X-ray imaging greater confidence, more accuracy in image interpretation. You can save time and benefit patients across multiple departments, radiology, emergency, critical care, operating rooms. There's no additional procedures or dose, same as chest x-ray. You can use it on any anatomy um, in any view. Um, and it's leveraging your existing x-ray equipment and training that uh, staff already has. So I'll leave our contact information up here. Thank you. And I think we have about 10 minutes for questions. Great. Thank you, Kareem. Yes, we've got a few questions here. Um, the first one is, uh, what is the benefit of using spectral IDR when you can always request further testing to confirm diagnosis? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, um, the, the main benefit of spectral DR comes when the patient is not easily moved. So, for example, if a patient is at the bedside and they're intubated, 
or they're in the operating room and otherwise indisposed to being moved or um, walk into um, follow-on imaging, that's where spectral DR becomes very helpful because it can do the imaging right at the bedside. And so now you can get a quality outcome in a timely fashion. Um, Jay, I'm sure, has had a lot of practical experience, so I'm sure he can add some to that uh, question as well. Uh, yes, the essentially what we're doing is not only it's not only saving follow-up testing, but if follow-up testing is needed, uh, providing more information about it. So we're augmenting uh, a CT. So we're we're not we're, there are some cases where we save the CT altogether, uh, so that the patient saves on the you know the dosage and the worry of having to go through that. Uh, but if they do or should they require that. Um, you could always do something like um, target the, a CT for fewer slices or have more information going in. So we're, we're augmenting um, any exams that might follow, but we're also helping uh, avoid them altogether. So avoiding a lot of costs and um, worry for the patient time in the hospital uh, and not to, not to discount by any means uh, cost of portering a patient around to possibly a CT or uh, or cleaning thereafter. Okay, and following on from that, um, is the workflow altered much with spectral DR, uh, and do the technologists find it a large adjustment? I think Jay should answer this yeah, one. I can elaborate on that. Uh, basically, in a word, no. Uh, it's it's completely the same. So uh, everything from you know, the physical handling, the weight and the size uh, are standard to the placement uh, behind the patient, the techniques, um, you know, if I can, you know, if, if I were to describe it and I have to text, I say, if I were to walk in here, place this in a, a bag and then in a pillowcase so you didn't know what detector you were using, you place it behind the patient, you take the image, you would never know you were using a spectral DR panel until three images pop up on the screen uh, instead of one. So the placement is the same, the dosage is the same, everything is the same that the technologist is uh, is used to to doing. Okay, a uh, question that's just popped up is, um, what about conditions such as an ACL tear? Does this technology have a role in augmenting, replacing gold standard of MRI? That's a, that's a fantastic question. So um, on ACL tears, that's an interesting, I don't think we've ever had this device used on an ACL tear. So I wouldn't be able to answer that completely. But um, it would definitely remove the bone and that may help, that may aid in visualization. If uh, the person who asked the question would like to try this device on an ACL tear, because the device is FDA cleared, Health Canada approved and CE marked for Europe, you could use it on a patient right now and get uh, and be reimbursed the same way as a regular x-ray. So we could find out. Okay, that's that's great. I'm, I'm sure she will get in contact with you. Um, another question here is, uh, is this type of technology good just for chest or can I use it as a replacement for general radiography? Yeah, no, the, the whole point of this technology is it's good for all anatomies and all um, views that regular x-ray. So absolutely, you can use it for anatomies that are other than the chest. Okay, and um, we've got time for about one more question, and it is, uh, how is this different than DR with bone suppression software? Right, so bone suppression software is exactly what it sounds like. It's a piece of software that looks at an x-ray image, finds out where the bones are, and then tries to hide them and fill in the gaps with soft tissue. It's not intrinsically able to identify calcium and water. And why that's important is because if I'm faced with a nodule, the bone suppression software cannot identify that nodule as being calcified or non-calcified, whereas dual energy x-ray can do that. Dual energy x-ray by virtue of physics is able to pinpoint whether something is calcified or not. So in a sense, with bone suppression software, 
you may see the nodule, but you're still going to require follow-up imaging. Um, with dual energy, you could actually um, get an optimization effect because you can identify um, the nodule as calcified, and then it would be pointless um, to go for follow-on imaging, or you can identify it as a soft tissue nodule, and then that would be a priority. The other advantage, of course, is coronary calcium, because in a lateral chest x-ray, bone suppression software will not work on lateral views. It only works on PA and AP. But in a lateral view, you can find coronary calcium that would be otherwise obscured by soft tissue in the bone image. And that, of course, um, is a phenomenal opportunity for triage and early detection of cardiac disease. Um, and of course, you can use it for any anatomy. And bone suppression software wouldn't work on different anatomies. It only really just works on PA and AP views. OK, that's great thing. There's no more questions that have come in, but if anybody has any further questions, as Kareem said, please uh, reach out to them and their email addresses are on the screen at the moment. So thank you so much, uh, Kareem and Jay, for your time today and a great presentation, very informative. I'd like to encourage everyone to visit today's sponsor, KA Imaging, uh, to learn more about their products and what they provide to our industry. Please visit kaimaging.com. As promised, the answer to today's trivia question was Bugs Bunny. So congratulations to our winner, Nancy Godby. A quick reminder, you can obtain your CE certificate by completing the post-webinar survey, which will be emailed one hour after the completion of today's webinar. You must complete the survey to receive your one AART Category A CE credit by the AHRA, and you'll be able to download the certificate directly from your computer once the survey is submitted. If you have any questions, you can reach us at webinar at mdpublishing.com. Uh, please visit icewebinars.live for more details of all our upcoming ICE webinars and for complimentary registration. Thank you again for your time today, and we hope to see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.